Hi. I'm just with the Dark Artists. My students call me Mr. Mitchell. This tutorial is going to be on perspective. I will do a example of one point, two point, and three point perspective. So here we go. What you see me doing here is showing you that once you establish a horizon line, anything above that horizon line, you're looking at the bottom of the object. If you're looking straight on, looking at, at the front of it and at the bottom, anything beneath it, you're looking at the top of the object. What I'm doing here is I'm showing how the horizon line works. When we were children, our teachers told us that the horizon line is where the sky meets the earth. But as we got older, we began to realize that the horizon line is actually where our eye levels are. So as you can see, I put some cameramen here and I showed how their cameras are looking at the, at the scenery. When drawing the character in the scenery, what you want to do is you want to put their heads even with the horizon line and that sh gives the the characters in the scene space that makes sense as you can see all three of the characters here line up even with the further back here I'm going to give an example of one point perspective one point perspective is simply when you're trying to just add depth into a scene it's mainly used for things like rooms roads um, anything that is that recedes back you'll notice that I'm going to do a hallway this the rectangle that I put back there would be the wall that's furthest away from all of us in the scene every line that is drawn in perspective goes to and from a vanishing point. The vanishing point is a little dot in the center of the rectangle that you see in the video. It is okay to use a ruler to do this. I've done this enough to where I can kind of eyeball it. So when you see me adding lines in the scene, try to visualize me first laying down a ruler to establish where the walls and the ceiling is going to meet. When you do a line from the vanishing point in the furthest wall back there, like you see me doing, um, what you want to do is you want to make sure the lines go through the corners of that rectangle. They do not have to go through the corners of the outer rectangle, which would be theoretically speaking, your your uh, your paper. I like to go ahead and add in all the lines ahead of time. Um, it kind of gives me an idea of, of you know it it builds like a a, a 3D grid. It helps me establish space. Um, when you're doing lines from pers from perspective, you are literally doing three type of lines. You're doing a diagonal line, you're doing a horizontal line, and you're doing a vertical line. The vertical and the horizontal lines make sure that they are straight. Uh, if you're doing a vertical line, make sure it's going straight up and down because if not, it's going to look like the walls are, are being, um, they're slanted. It's going to throw the perspective off. As you can see here, I'm showing how to do a door. Um, you lay down your lines and then you just add the, you know, the diagonal line um, at the top. This window that I'm doing, um, you'll see that I added two lines that are diagonal. One that is above the horizon line and one that is below the horizon line. The reason why you want to do one below the horizon line is because when you look at a window, you see the window seal. You see the top of it. You do not see um, windows at a, at a diagonal there. And I did an example to show what I what I was talking about. You'll notice that I did 
a hallway back there and now what I'm doing is I'm doing an outcropping on the wall. I established the base of the the bases of the of the outcropping and then I line up their their front uh, corners and then I line up their back and I make sure that the diagonal lines are even along the, the front sides and then I let them all meet. I'm going to do the windows or sorry the, the lights in the hallway. Oh whoops. Looks like I did a, a hallway first. Yeah, you do two vertical lines that uh, straight up and down, and then on the corners of the of the lines, you do horizontal lines to make them go back, and then you can shade it or you can erase it accordingly. Now I'm doing the lights. Space them out. You're gonna do diagonal lines first to show the space between them, and then you're just gonna do horizontal lines accordingly. This is both effective for a ceiling and it's effective for tiling on the ground as you're going to see me do here. I establish my lines and then I go ahead and I fill it in later with the colors to make it pop, add contrast and then as you can see it kind of all adds up if you do it correctly. Two point perspective is no more than an artist trying to depict an angle of an edge of something. In this case, I'm going to do a house. I start off again with the horizon line, but this time I use the vanishing points. There's two instead of one. These vanishing points, they must be off of the page. The further away the vanishing points are, the better, because the closer that they are together in the scene, uh, the more distorted that the object is going to be. So space them out. I then connect the I, I first create an edge, and then I create I connect the lines accordingly to the vanishing points on either side. Anything on the left hand side like a door or anything like that is going to coincide with the left vanishing point and alternately anything on the right hand side is going to alternate with the right. I'm doing a gable. I did a line and then on the top of it I made it connect to the corners of the house. The top of the gable I bring back into the vanishing point on the right. Again, <clears throat> again, anything on the right hand side should line up with the vanishing point on that right hand side and alternately again on the left you see me going back and forth I'm creating the door and then do the top every line goes to and from the vanishing points I do a window do two of them and again the line that creates the top and the bottom of that window goes to and from a vanishing point. I do the same thing on the and on the other side for another example. Starting off with vertical lines that are parallel. I create the door and then alternately I line the the window up to the top of the door. I create vertical lines and then I connect them. Now I'm going to do the ground plane. To do the ground plane, you just simply use your vanishing points and you just draw them across the scene. Make them intersect. As shown. Three point perspective is the depiction of either a bird's eye view or a worm's eye view. The first one I do is going to be a bird's eye view. Similar to two point perspective, your vanishing point should be off of the, of the picture plane and they should be spread out quite a bit from one another. You then 
use the vanishing points to draw through the scene and you have the lines intersect from either side of the vanishing points. The third vanishing point is going to be again off the page and at the bottom in this case because what you want to do is you want to show the lines coming from the bottom up. You're again you're looking at a plane and you're a bird in the sky and you're looking down on an object so you're going to see the top of that object. Again every line should recede to and from the vanishing points. The third vanishing point is it creates an angle. It creates an angle of perspective to where things look like they are getting smaller as they go further away from us and uh, bigger as they go towards us. Then you disconnect. On the right hand side in this case is going to go to the left. It's in reverse. Similarly, on the left hand side, it's going to go to the right vanishing point. And there you go. You have a object that is in three point perspective in bird's eye view. Worm's eye view is the same as the as the um, as the former, but what you do is instead of starting at the top, you put your vanishing points on the bottom again. Make sure they're spread out uh, further apart and you begin to again you you are going to use the lines and you're going to indicate uh, a grid you're going to use it you're going to use the lines created a grid from either side of the vanishing points you're done with the space or with the plane and you're dealing with space so as the lines go to and from each other they're going to look like they're going uh, into in, deep into the scene for depth in this case it would be a sky the third vanishing point again is off of the page you're going to use that to create the edge of an object and then you just repeat the steps this time the object is going to be further off the page so um, yeah you're going to draw the lines accordingly to and from the vanishing points and then you're going to use the third vanishing point again to create an angle to show um, objects receding in space and there you have it I drew a head on there to kind of show that you can use a third vanishing point um, you can put those anywhere on the page they don't have to just run from one okay this last depiction of three-point perspective I am showing you how to freehand it pretty much you still use the vanishing points off the page like so but instead of trying to keep drawing every single line to and from the vanishing point you can make a grid first an isometric grid and then you just use the lines that you establish to um, create forms in space um, again if you lay down your lines correctly then once you use the isometric grid you shouldn't have a problem depicting an object in in um, in perspective in this case I'm going to do a human or a figure I guess you can say um, you can see I'm doing the arm there the arm is in space it recedes accordingly and I do another one to show that I put another vanishing point away from the first one and then I follow my grid and by the time I'm finished I have two figures and there you go thank you for your time